live out these dreams. What did you see? I will not be silent. Talk to my family about Kelly. I'm sorry, kid. I say before all of you, I spoke the truth. Something wicked. This way comes. Me? I'm nobody. Tell me this isn't really happening. There's nothing left. Anywhere there's people, it's powerful. I wanted tonight to be special. We love film. With our entire soul, we love it. And every year we get the gift of great stories from great filmmakers that pour their heart all over the screen, whether it's the small screen or the big screen, there is nothing better than sinking into those worlds that they create. So like every year, we wanted to share some of our favorites from the year. Of course, these are subjective picks. And since it was 2021, we're doing 21 of them. Seven from Josh, seven from me, and seven that we agreed on. And right off the bat, there are four films that neither of us have had a chance to see yet. And these are films that I'm pretty positive would have ended up on this list, which are The Tragedy of Macbeth, Nightmare Alley, Licorice Pizza, and West Side Story. All of these films look incredible, and they're from some of the greatest filmmakers that ever lived, so we are drooling to see them, but you know, damn COVID. But jumping into the first on our list, and this is in no particular order at all, we have King Richard, the latest from Will Smith, directed by Ronaldo Marcus Green. It's the story of Richard Williams and his family, specifically his daughters, Venus and Serena Williams. It's a beautifully told story and is really about family and the power of great parenting. And I cried twice. Next is the most epic film of the year, and that is Dune, directed by Denis Villeneuve, who is an unbelievably talented filmmaker. The cast is fantastic, the visuals are bonkers, and it's possibly one of the best sci-fi films of the decade. The film is loaded with visual effects, of course, which are all beautiful, and most importantly, they, like everything else in the film, don't stand out on their own. As with all his films, it's this perfect mixture of all the seasonings that makes it all so delicious in every frame. Next up is another big story, but on a much smaller scale than Dune, and that is The Green Knight. I think this film was a little split with people's reaction for the most part, but I adored it. First off, it's just gorgeous to look at. It's also filled with amazing performances, and the entire thing is this incredible visual poem. It's a big swing of a movie, the type that's almost impossible to get made nowadays, and I love it for that. Also, Ralph Ineson, if I'm not butchering his name, has probably the best voice in Hollywood. Number four in our order that doesn't actually matter is a Another big one, and that's Daniel Craig's last go as Bond in No Time to Die. I thought this was a great send off for him. Great set pieces, emotional, and excellently directed by Kerry Joji Fukunaga. He's a fascinating filmmaker, the type that it's always really fun to see tackle a big tentpole film like this. Number five is our only animated film on the list, and that's The Mitchells vs. The Machines. I love the animation here, definitely had Into the Spider Verse vibes, but the whole thing is very imaginative, funny, and heartfelt. You could definitely feel Chris Miller and Phil Lord's hands all over it too. Now moving from the light and happy to, well, the exact opposite, and with our only non-traditional non-fiction on the list, which is the experimental performance piece by Bo Burnham called Inside. This was everywhere when Netflix released it, and for good reason. Burnham created the entire thing completely alone in his home during the height of the pandemic while struggling with his own mental health. The film is raw and more affecting than anything I saw last year. I didn't stop thinking about it for a long while after, and and the songs in the film burrowed into my brain to take up permanent residence. Next was a film that actually won Oscars last year already, but wasn't released fully until 2021, so I'm counting it. Judas and the Black Messiah is an incredibly powerful film across the board. Shaka King's direction is inspiring. The cinematography was gorgeous, excellent score and script, and fantastic performances with the standout for me being from Daniel Kaluuya, who won an Oscar for it. His performance as Fred Hampton was easily my favorite 
of the year. Next, we have a Josh pick, which I'm dying to wrap my eyes around and haven't had a chance yet, and that is The Last Duel. In Josh's words, Ridley Scott is a master of his craft, returning to a genre which he reaches God tier status in. The man is brilliant, which of course I couldn't agree more. And this movie, Josh says, is a product of all of that. The performances are amazing with Matt Damon and Ben Affleck, who wrote the film alongside Nicole Holof Center, and then of course Adam Driver and Jodie Comer, who Josh says deserves an Oscar for her performance here. Pulling back from the massive and epic to the more personal, we have a Hitchcockian style horror mystery from director David Bruckner. There are some genuinely creepy moments in this film, but what I loved most was its mixture of the Hitchcockian thriller and mystery with some of that bend toward the supernatural horror. The film almost feels like an adaptation of a book. There's this novel style to its form and it works really great. So if you're looking for a horror film from an excellent director that balances the creepy with the story, jump on this one. On to another Josh pick that I haven't had the chance to see yet is Belfast, which Josh calls a beautiful film written and directed by Kenneth Branagh, filled with a charming cast, especially the little boy Jude Hill, and it has gorgeous black and white cinematography. And I'm a big fan of black and white films. Sometimes stripping away the color for me focuses in on a unique realism. Moving to back to back, Josh picks with the biggest film of the year that exploded through the $1 billion mark in theaters, which of course is Spider-Man No Way Home. All the Tom Holland Spider-Man films have been fun and Josh says that this is the most fun yet. Confident direction with a story that unfolded in a very smart and entertaining way, which he loved far more than he even thought he would. I haven't seen it yet, so I don't wanna know any more than that. On to another sequel, our 12th film of the year is A Quiet Place 2. I actually did a breakdown of some moments in this film on our channel this year. I love the way John Krasinski built tension here and kept the film centered on the emotional connection of the family. I'm also a huge fan of both Emily Blunt and Killian Murphy, so that's a nice icing on the overall cake that is a very fun ride with an excellent opening sequence. What stood out the most for me though was the thematic elements that Krasinski carried from the first film into this one. It wasn't just a plot sequel, it was a thematic sequel extending from and paying off what emotionally was planted in the first film. Next up is the directorial debut from my friend Ricky Staub, Concrete Cowboy. It's a heartfelt, engaging, soulful film that just oozes of love, and it doesn't hurt that Idris Elba is carrying it. I love the real docu-style Ricky brought to the visual language here, and his use of people from that community that had never acted before. His ability to pull beautiful performances out of folks that have never acted is just next level. Moving back to Tentpole City, we have another Josh pick with Ghost Busters, directed by Jason Reitman, son of Ivan Reitman, who of course directed the original films. Josh calls this a love letter to the original films, felt like an 80s or 90s blockbuster made with today's resources. It's a ton of fun with plenty of comedy. And speaking of great comedy, The French Dispatch is Wes Anderson's latest and a wonderfully charming and odd film. The cast is insane with what feels like 72% of all of Hollywood in the film. And in Josh's opinion, this is Wes Anderson's best. So if you're an Anderson fan, you probably already seen this, but if you aren't or are on the fence, give it a go. Staying with Josh's picks and uplifting films, we have Come On, Come On starring Joaquin Phoenix. It's a warm hug of a movie that made Josh want to call all of his loved ones, he said. Woody Norman and Phoenix had perfect chemistry here and the film does an excellent job illustrating how we impact each other's lives for good or bad, which is another reason we love film, the ability to have it hold up a mirror and make us think. But if you don't want to think and you are looking to shut your brain off and just enjoy Enjoy yourself for 92 straight minutes, toss on nobody. This one is from some of the team behind John Wick and it shows in all the best ways. I'm also a massive fan of taking someone unexpected to be in this kind of genre and slapping them as the action hero. And I think Odenkirk was great for it. The film never takes itself too seriously. It's over the top, kind of funny and just all around wacky fun. It's just a great action with great action beats and choreography. Next up is Tick Tick Boom, a musical hybrid from Lynn manuel Manuel Miranda. Great music with a number that will be etched into your head for the rest of eternity and great performance from Andrew Garfield. If you are a fan of musicals or biopics or both, this one's for you. Speaking of more great performances, our next film, Spencer, has another one of my favorite performances of the year. This was, in my opinion, without a doubt, the best performance of Kristen Stewart's career. And like I said on Letterboxd, if she doesn't get nominated for an Oscar with this one, I will be truly shocked. Her transformation was pretty incredible 
incredible. At times, especially in wide shots, I completely forgot I was watching Kristen Stewart at all. The film as a whole is somber and tense, a look at the crippling nature of being held under the microscope, one that doesn't feel the need to spoon feed you at any time, which I appreciate. Then we have Zola, an A24 produced film from director Janixa Bravo, who is also a writer on the film. And the IMDb synopsis of this one is a stripper named Zola embarks on a wild road trip to Florida. And it's a partially true story that was developed from a 148 tweet storm by the real Zola that broke down her account of this insane trip. It's funny, heartbreaking, and told with a very strong and unique voice. And that brings us to our last film, Coda, which makes you feel like a better person for having watched it. It's a wonderful and wholesome story that gives you perspective into the life of the hearing impaired in a very impactful way. The entire cast is excellent, but the performance that really stood out and tug at our hearts came from Troy Kutzer, who has been up for and won several awards already, and rightfully so. But that's it, our personal list of 21 of our favorite films from 2021. Of course, favorite isn't best, it's all subjective. What we love might not match with what you do, and that's another amazing thing about film. There's something for everyone. But there's a lot of other films that we loved that didn't make the list, some lesser known films, some strange films that tried big things and some great indies. You can find all of that in our honorable mentions list in the notes below. And if you're a film lover like us and aren't on Letterboxd, what's wrong with you? They have absolutely nothing to do with this show whatsoever. We make no money from them and have never been in contact with them. It's just my favorite app. I use it as a way to keep track of the films that I watch and toss what I felt in from time to time. You can look back at that later if you want. It's really like a film lover's diary. You can follow both me and Josh on there if you'd like, link in the notes below. But that's it for today. And of course, we would love to see your top 21. So post that in the comments below. And until next time, don't forget to write, shoot, edit, repeat, and watch more movies.